Do we have a roll call, Sandy? Councilman Spoleman? Yes. Wolfow? Yes. Meinhardt? Yes. Trippers? Yes. Mayor Fulton? Yes. Motion carries. Um, thank you, Mayor, members of the City Council. Uh, this next item uh, under the City Manager's report is with respect to an amendment to our street lighting agreement. Anytime lights are added or taken away, it requires an amendment to the agreement accordingly. Uh, and in this instance, there are three lights that are being replaced uh, and to amend the consumer's energy street lighting contract accordingly. If I may also put in a plug at this point too, 10 a.m. this Friday, Consumers Energy's Foundation is presenting a $50,000 grant to the city and just wanted to make sure that everybody here and in the public are aware of that and if they're available to attend at the city park for a check presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Is this um, being done because we're changing? Yes. With the whole no park layout? Yes. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve the Consumers Energy Street Lighting Contract Amendment as presented. Support. Could we have the roll call? Have my roll file? Yes. My heart? Yes. Zippers? Yes. Bowman? Yes. Mayor Shulkin? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you, <laughs> Mayor, members of the City Council. While you might think I'm being Joe by I am not. This next item is regarding the Channel Monster. <laughs> As I skipped? No, I didn't skip. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Channel, what's the other one, uh, Jeff Dillon? Muffin. The Muffin Monster. The Muffin Monster. But we, Channel Monster. We replaced Muffin. the Muffin Monster a year ago, right? We had it rebuilt, yes. So we rebuilt the Muffin. So we need to replace, these we are the brand names. The Muffin for, Monster. Yeah, the Muffin. These are the brand names for these devices. Um, in the uh, correspondence you have in your packet before you, you'll see that we did receive um, three bids. Uh, for uh, for the purchase of this Channel Monster grinder. Uh, the recommendation this evening is actually to reject the bids uh, and to acquire directly through JWC Environmental the manufacturer of the, uh, the, the Channel Monster. Uh, this specific part that the city can actually install with its own labor, we might need to acquire some additional parts, but we can do it uh, for uh, $52,100, which is significantly less than, than all of the bids um, that we've received. Uh, Jeff, I'm not sure if there's anything that, that you wanted to add to that or if I'm missing something. No, you, you got right on the head what, what we feel we have the expertise in-house to install it ourselves and save a substantial amount of money for the city. Do you know what our labor costs will be to do it? We project we'll have an additional $5,000 in labor and contracted out electrical uh, to finish the whole project. So probably about 57000 altogether around that area when the, the bid was 72, I think. So the bids from the other two companies didn't, weren't of the items that we were looking for. It says inferior equipment. Yeah, uh, one of the things is the muffin, uh, the channel monster is both a screening tool and a grinder, and it's w the screen is set up in such a way that it does it allows uh, water to come through the screen, but the the screens rotate towards the grinders. The grinders are smaller, so they have more torque on them. The other uh, ones uh, uh, they do different things to try to keep the hydraulic level the same of the water. So one has a small grind. Uh, spool of the grinder and then a big spool that water can pass through well then you don't get the torque at the where the grinding happens and so there's different avenues that people have tried to do to make the hydraulic profile stay the same but they just they it becomes in uh, an, a piece of equipment that doesn't do what we want it to do so gotta have that hydraulic torque <laughs> hydraulic profile and just the torque on the grinders, yes. I recommend a field trip to see it in action. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we can take a two by four through it, so, and grind her up, so. The, I, I think it's, it's perhaps important to note, and Jeff or Owen, correct me if I'm, if I'm uh, wrong, but 
Um, if we were to actually go off of uh, the bids that were received and have a turnkey approach to the installation of this, the recommendation would have been to perceptive services and operations in the amount of the $77,639 amount. To get the uh, manufacturer that right, you want. Right, right, to have the, the one that, which was actually the highest bidder. So by us acquiring it directly from the manufacturer and then installing it by and large on our own. $20,000? Yeah, it's about a $20,000 savings. Nice job. So how do we, um, do we just award the contract or do we have to first say to reject the bids? Um, no, um, we just have it simply as uh, a motion to award the contract for the purchase of a Channel Monster grinder yeah. to JWC Environmental in the amount of $52,100. i will make that motion. Support. Uh, got lots of support. Could we have... Mm -hmm. Oh, it's Channel Monster, right? Yeah. Who wouldn't support that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, could we have... Do a call, please? Councilmember Meinhart? Yes. Trippers? Yes. Bullman? Yes. Wolfile? Yes. Mayor Falcon? Yes. Motion carried. Why is it so entertaining? <laughs> <laughs> um, while we're still on uh, Jeff Dietland's department, Jeff, if you want to handle uh, the automatic refrigerated wastewater samplers, in this instance we are looking at utilizing uh, HESCO. HESCO, you yes. Want to explain the difference between the two bids? Yeah, uh, between the two bids, we received two bids. Uh, and they have different sampling operations, how you sample. And one has a, a, a chamber where the water actually passes through and you have a, what I'd call a dipper arm that dips into the water and brings it, the sample up and then it's sampled into a jug. The other one actually has a, a suction tube that sucks the sample out from a stilling uh, well instead of this pass-through well. And we feel that the stilling well actually slows, you get a better representative sample from the stilling well than you do from the paddle uh, design. Because the paddle design, you have to keep the flow flowing through the channel at such a speed that it hits that paddle and a lot of the debris will be diverted off the paddle and, and you just don't get a quite a representative sample. But when you suck in it out of that water when it's passing through, you get a more representative sample and so even though it's the more expensive uh, option, we feel that we get a better sampling and a better results from those. So a little, little over $3,000 difference between the two that were received. Um, and based on what the utilities director uh, identified as the differences, the recommendation is to go with HESCO out of Warren, Michigan, uh, with funds available in the water and sewer fund accordingly. Okay, I'll make a motion to award the contract for the purchase of two automatic refrigerated wastewater samplers to HESCO of Warren, Michigan, in accordance with their bid. Support. And the bid was for, the total was 17000 right? Correct, the okay. total of the two samplers okay. were. All right, Sandy, could we have a roll call, please? House Member Serper? Yes. Bowman? Yes. Lofile? Yes. Meinhardt? Yes. Yes. Motion carried. Thank you, Mayor, members of the City Council. This next item is regarding uh, bids and a recommendation uh, for four uh, 2016 work trucks. Uh, we are not ready to move on this item yet this evening and kindly request that it be tabled. I'll make a motion to table. Second. Sandy, can we have the roll call, please? House Member Spoolman? Yes. Wolfile? Yes. Meinhardt? Yes. Trippers? Yes. Mayor Falcon? Yes. Motion carried. Okay, the minutes of boards and commissions that we have this evening are the minutes of the Dog Park Advisory Committee, which held their last meeting on March 16th. At this time, we'll open the floor for uh, public comment. Seeing no one, we'll close public comment. And does anyone have anything for the good of the order this evening? Uh, just wanted, once again, to mention 10 o'clock Friday the 22nd at the City Park. Uh, unless there's a major weather event, I expect that's where we'll be 
uh, having the check presentation uh, ceremony from Consumers Energy. Uh, they very graciously have donated $50,000 to the city of Cadillac as a part of the uh, uh, plaza project uh, that's, that's, um, that's going on. And Mayor, I think, uh, do you want me to mention tomorrow? Or you no, I was going to do that. Okay. Um, yeah, I'll leave it at that. Okay. Okay. From me. Um, on Wednesday, the Mayor's Youth Council is meeting in these chambers at 4 o'clock. Um, I'd like to invite adults and b adults alike to come join in and see what we do and um, perhaps consider joining us. But uh, you don't have to be a youth to attend. Uh, so please consider coming and seeing all the good things that the youth in Cadillac are doing. I want to remind um, everyone that the MSU Extension is putting on a workshop for shoreline um, landscaping and management to help um, prevent erosion. Um, and the City of Cadillac is now partnering with us on that, and I appreciate that um, because we recognize how important it is and how many riparian or landowners around the lake that we have within the City of Cadillac. Um, so I would highly suggest anyone who has any lakefront property to take that, to, to look that class up. It's on um, May 12th. It's a Thursday, and it starts at 4.30, and it's going to be at the Carl T. Johnson Center. And you can contact our office for more information or the City Hall or look it up on um, our website. Um, it's called Protecting Your Shoreline, a workshop for inland property owners. I'm sorry, Mayor Strickland, I forgot something. May I? <laughs> of course you may. Thank you. Um, I'd also like to thank Officer Rourke and Chief Golnick and the community group, the um, Cadillac Community Partnership and the Lincoln School Neighborhood Watch Group because signs have been put up and they're continuing to raise money for more signs. They're doing can drives. There's a Facebook page that you can go to to find out when those are. And it's, um, I believe, I may be wrong. Um, check out that Facebook page. But I think there's another can drive this weekend. So they've raised quite a bit of money with people donating their cans. That's one of the lovely things about being in Michigan where an old empty can will get you a dime. So save your cans and support community partnerships. Good. Thank you. I'm good for tonight. Okay. I'm good for tonight. Okay. I had uh, three things that I wanted to uh, share this evening. Uh, the first being that on May 7th we are going to have our community cleanup. And that's always a fun and adventurous day. So I would encourage everyone to reach out to any groups or organizations that you're involved with and ask them to put a group of people together and come out and help us out on that day. And uh, secondly, uh, there is a public session tomorrow evening here in the council chambers. It's just an open forum for anyone that would like to come and learn more about uh, the Commons Project for the Plaza, the Farmer's Market, the Rotary Pavilion, anything that's going on downtown that um, you have concerns about or that you're completely supportive of, but you're just wondering what kind of updates are happening and where are we and you know what do the timelines look like we would love to have everyone come and learn more about the project uh, we're going to do it tomorrow uh, Tuesday and then we're also going to do another one next Tuesday so if you can't come to the first one please try to make the second one Did you say the time again um, it is from five to six And then lastly, I wanted to share that on the 1st of May, we are starting up a new Mayor's Fit City Challenge. And so there is a Facebook page that has been created, and it will be coming up very soon. And we have uh, the tools, the, the calendar as it exists today uh, will be out on that Facebook page. Um, and one of the challenges that I would like to put out there this time around for everyone is that I would like to challenge 
every organization, every business in Cadillac to come up with an event that you can invite people to get out and be active and participate in in the community. Uh, you'll get extra points for that if you do that. Um, and it will really become a more community thing if everyone is helping to create that opportunity to be healthy. So more to come on that. So. Did you have anything more, Marcus? I uh, just wanted to mention the closed session. Oh, okay. So we will need to be going into closed session. And if someone would make that motion to take us there, it's a lengthy one. Mm -hmm. I'd make a motion to adjourn to closed session to <laughs> consult with the city's attorney regarding trial or settlement strategy. Yeah, I hope I'm reading the right one here, because yeah. if I... So far, so good. <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> I was on the wrong one. Connection with the Clam Lake Township and Herring Charter Township versus the State Boundary Commission, Terry DLLC, and the City of Cadillac Supreme Court, docket number 151800 for the reason that an open meeting would have a detrimental financial effect on the litigating or settlement position of the city. And to consult with the city's attorney regarding trial or settlement strategy in connection with the city of Cadillac versus Michelet Corporation. Wexford County Circuit Court case number 14-25602-CH. For the reason that an open meeting would have a detrimental financial effect on the litigating or settlement position of the city, and to consider attorney-client privileged written legal opinions. Okay. Support. Sandy, could we have a roll call, please? Councilmember Wolfile? Yes. Reinhardt? Yes. Rippers? Yes. Goldman? Yes. Mayor Fulton? Yes. Motion carries.